fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. railroads were built into the western United States, the engineers and men were faced with a constant danger of attack by outlaws and Indians, and their task might never have been accomplished had it not been for the masked rider of the plains. It was his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness that blazed the trail for progress and finally made possible the winning of the West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of a great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. We're heading for the mission. There's going to be trouble. Oh, Silver! For some hours, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had been riding hard across the open country. Ahead, the masked man saw a little mission where he knew he would find his good friend, the Padre. There it is, Tonto. Matt Gordon, we made it before sundown. I wonder why the Padre was so anxious to see us. Maybe plenty trouble ahead. We'll soon know. Easy there. Oh, Easy, boy. Oh, 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 oh. My good friend, you have come. It wasn't until noon that we were told you weren't us, Padre. I sent the word out yesterday. I hoped you would be here before this day was ended. Tomorrow would be too late. I'm glad we got here tonight. Now, what is it, Padre? Steady, boy. Tonto, no, no. take the horses over to the watering trough. Ah, uh, time to fix them. You come along, sir. Come along. What have you accomplished in your pursuit of John Kimberly? Very little. We have no more proof that he's a criminal now than we had two weeks ago. What I have to tell you may be of help, or it may not. Tomorrow evening, when the railroad from the east stops at Warren City, it will bring a doctor, Dr. Manson. It will bring a doctor? See, si. But he is not a good man. He is known to have betrayed his science many times. John Kimberly sent for him. Why, Padre? I do not know. Warren City. Warren and Miles have their headquarters there. I know. Kimberly is to meet the doctor at the train. I see. I was wondering. The other day, Kimberly met several men. He gave them money. I don't know how much. And they headed west. I was going to follow them when I heard that you wanted to see me. What I have said may be of little or no help, but... It may be a lot of help. I'm going to Warren City. Hello. We're riding on again. You will not wait for refreshment and rest? There won't be time. It's a long trip to Warren City. Silver, ready now. Steady, fella. <laughs> Thank you, Padre. Goodbye until another time. Adios, amigo. Come on, Silver. Get him up, scout. Good luck, Lone Ranger. I heard him. Oh. You would not come from the patio while he was here. No, Padre. I, I couldn't. My child, I do not understand you. It... You don't. You hide from the man you so greatly admire. He has never seen your face. No, Padre. You see, he knew my brother. They were friends. He might remember me, or he might guess that I'm the sister of his friend. I look like my brother who was killed. But what of that? The Lone Ranger has closed that part of his life, Padre. He buried his identity in the graves of his companions. His life is dedicated to something fine and great. If he saw me, 
he might recall other days, happier days, when he didn't know loneliness. You think it would make him unhappy to recall those days before he became the Lone Ranger? Why risk making him unhappy? Or risk having him desire the love that can never be part of his life? You would say that, but for your modesty. Uh, I wouldn't want the Lone Ranger to change. He must never be anything but what he is. The following evening, Jim Warren and Harry Miles were in the little shack that served as their office in Warren City. Harry stood gazing idly out of the window at the gleaming tracks of the railroad, waiting for Jim to finish at the desk. I guess the arrangements are all finished, Harry. Here's a copy of the letter I sent West. You sent it in plenty of time, didn't you? Oh, sure. There'll be horses waiting for us when we reach the end of the tracks. We can take the train for about 100 miles. Right. Then we'll ride horses the rest of the way. <laughs> now, I'm anxious to get to where the grading crews at work. We haven't heard of any trouble there. Let's hope we won't find trouble when we get there. I'd like to stay overnight with a grading crew and then shove on to the pass and see how the surveyors are getting along. Beyond the pass, all out for Junction City. By October 1st or bust. <laughs> we aren't going to bust. In spite of... John Kimberly? Yeah. The crook. Oh, if there were only proof. I'd sure like to see the coyote in jail. Who wouldn't? I hope he hasn't made trouble out there. If the tracks catch up to the grading crew or the graders overtake the surveyors... The whole job will be slowed up. Jim. Yeah? Are you sure that we'll forfeit the railroad contract if we're not finished by October 1st? Oh, no question about that, Harry. I've studied the contract and I know it by heart. Then Kimberly would get control. Oh, sure he would. That's why he's breaking his neck to delay us. I don't think he'd stop at anything. Just how far do you really think he'd go? Murder. You believe that, aren't you? Well, I'm sure of it. As a matter of fact, I sent a letter to Washington. I said that if anything happened to us, someone should look for a murderer. What else did you say? Well, enough to cause an investigation and make it hot for Kimberly if he's involved. Oh, I'm glad I wrote that letter, too. It's wild country out beyond the end of the tracks. Hey, look there, out the window. Well, what's happening? The train's pulled into the station. The people are getting off. Oh. <laughs> I've seen that before. Now I want to finish up at the desk. But take here. a look. John Kimberly just bent, went by the window. Kimberly, are you sure, Harry? See for yourself. He's talking to someone who just got off the train. It's been a long time since I saw you, Kimberly. Yes, it has. And you certainly have changed a lot, Doctor. You don't look like the Dr. Manson I used to know in Washington. I suppose I don't. I've had a hard time these past few years. You can't blame anyone but yourself for that. You wanted to get rich too fast. Don't throw that up to me. Uh, I don't intend to. Come on, let's walk over this way. Why did you tell me to come here? <laughs> you came, didn't you? I know what you can do to me if I refuse. Refuse to take orders from you. Good. I'm glad you understand that. I suppose you still have that evidence that would jail me? I have. I thought so. Yeah, you needn't be afraid of it, though, Doc. I won't use it. <laughs> Unless you force me to. Why did you send for me? I've got some work for you. What kind? It's right in your line. I see you brought your little bag along. Of course. Still have the bottles of medicines and things in it? Yes. Why did you send for me? You still have that white powder you used in Washington? Don't speak of that. <laughs> Distasteful now. You didn't mind talking about the white powder when you were plotting the murder of a sir? Don't. Come, um, come now, Doc. You mustn't let your nerves get the better of you. <laughs> no one knows that his nibs died of poison. Everybody called it a natural death. Uh, heart failure, wasn't it? Kimberly, you've ruined my life. Aren't you satisfied? So far, I've been well satisfied, Doc. But now there's something I want done. I can guess. A couple of young fellows know that I'm fighting them. Men always know it when they're in a fight with John Kimberly. You don't fight fair. Uh, we won't discuss that, Doc. The point is simply this. I want a couple of cases of, uh, well, we can call it heart failure again. Young men who aren't strong enough for the rigors of the West shouldn't overtask themselves. You'll know what to say. Uh, where are these men? What is your plan? They're here in town now. 
They'll be leaving for the western end of the railroad when the train pulls out in a few days. We're leaving tonight by horse. Kimberly, I... I suppose there's no use pleading with you. No use at all. Come on, Doc. I'll take you where you can rest and get ready for a long ride. Several days in a saddle and nights in camp. Kimberly and Dr. Manson were far from Warren City when the westbound train pulled out with Harry and Jim on board. The doctor had been increasingly nervous, much to the annoyance of John Kimberly. We find the two men at a hitch rack outside a cafe. We we'll stop at the hotel here in town tonight, Doc. Maybe that's what you need—a good night's sleep. It, uh, it isn't that. Uh, and a few drinks before going to bed. <laughs> Come on in the cafe, and I'll stand treat. It isn't sleeping out in the open that is bothering me. Sure it is. You're not used to it, that's all. <laughs> I thought it'd be better if we didn't show much of ourselves near Warren City. That's why I didn't want to stop in the towns before now. Go on inside. Uh, wait. Well, what's the matter now? The, the feeling I've had, it just came over me again. Stronger than ever. Oh, stop your nonsense. I can't help it, Kimberly. I, I told you before that I felt as if every move we made was watched. Out here? <laughs> Rot. No one pays any attention to anyone else out in this part of the country. You've said that before, And the further I... west we go, the wilder it gets. Tomorrow we'll reach the end of the railroad tracks, and from there on, it'll be really wilderness. Can't we abandon this plan of yours? No, we can't. Must we go through with the... through with everything you've outlined? We must. I've told you there'll be an investigation when those two are found dead. I've got to be sure there's no way I can be blamed. Now, what'll you have to drink? I don't care. It doesn't matter. Say there, bartender. Yeah? Set out a couple of glasses in that bottle you've got your hand on. We'll pour our own. Yes. Yeah, I'll pour yours, Doug. Yeah, there you are. <coughs> Careful, Beth. <coughs> Say... What's the idea of scaring a man like you did my friend? I didn't mean to startle you. Sorry. It, it's all right. You're nervous. What are you afraid of? N nothing at all. You should be. Well, what? What do you mean? I've heard that this is dangerous country for an Easterner. Oh, you... Uh, what do you mean? Look here, stranger. I don't know who you are, and I don't care. My friend and I don't feel sociable. Savvy? I'm not always sociable myself. But you look like Easterners, and I thought I'd warn you to be careful what you drink when you go west from here. What do you mean? A few miles beyond the end of the tracks is a place called Vulture Country. The water around there isn't dependable, and uh, some of it's poison. Oh, yes, yes, we've heard about that. Oh? Well, thanks for the warning. Now, if you're through... Now, there's one thing more. Maybe your friend here has something to cure a burn. The doctor, do you have anything to put on a burn? Well, I... How did you know I was a doctor? You look like one in this little bag you had on the saddle. Where did you get that? I brought it in with me. Took it from the doctor's saddle to save him going out after it. Oh, I'd like to have something for a burn. I, I'll get it. Well, of all the nerve, I never... It's all right, John. I... Just a minute, mister. Here, let me open that. Do your hands tremble like that all the time? I, I've got a tin here that... Now, what's this stuff? I, it... Uh... It's uh, just medicine, that's all. Medicine. Uh, you wouldn't understand. A Latin name. Now, here, take this. Rub it on the burn. Uh, take it all. You're welcome to it. Thank you, Doctor. Now, if you two go into the vulture country, look out for the water you drink. Adios. John. John, that man. His eyes. Did you notice the nerve of him, the meddler? Why doesn't he mind his own business? The way he looked at me. The way he spoke. Kimberly, uh, let's get away from here tonight, now. We're going to sleep here. No, 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 I can't. We can't go on tonight. The horses need rest, and so do I. Come on in back and we'll get rooms. That, that feeling. Something is going to happen before morning. I tell you, I know it. Oh, shut up. Before morning, something is going to happen. curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
now to continue our story. When the stranger left the cafe with a small tin of burn remedy in his hand, he joined an Indian in the shadow of the hotel where even the faint light of a new moon didn't reach. Otto, now I'll take my mask and the other hat. Uh, I'm ready for you. You talked to the doctor? Yes, and I saw the inside of his bag. And what there? A box of powder. Poison enough to kill a small army. Ah, uh, and that what you say maybe happened. I'm still convinced that we can protect Jim and Harry best by keeping an eye on those two. Uh. But I can't forget... What that? Kimberly hired half a dozen men for something. It was only a week ago. Not right. We haven't found out why he hired them. I wish we knew that. There. The mask is snug enough now. Now, Tonto, there's a job for you to do. Uh, what can he do? The rooms are in the rear of the hotel. Come with me. silence of a cat, Tonto and the Lone Ranger moved through the darkness. They heard the distant sound of a passing train and paused. Tonto, that's the westbound. We'll reach the end of the tracks in half an hour. Uh. Jim and Harry will get off. In the morning, they'll be in the saddle and then... I wonder... Dr. Manson tossed fitfully in his bed, while across the room, John Kimberly was deep in sleep. Suddenly, the doctor wakened. He didn't know why. Once more, he felt that creeping, tingling apprehension that was driving him to desperation. He turned, stared at the dimly outlined square of the window, and then... There! He's there! What's the matter? Doc! Doc! I saw him. I tell you, I saw him at the window. I shot him. Hey, you confounded crazy fool. Keep your hands off that gun till I get a light going. It couldn't have been a dream. It couldn't have been. What's the matter there? What's all the shooting? Hey, it's all right. Just a nightmare, that's all. Well, cut out the shooting. John, I know I saw him. I saw his head and shoulders there at the window. It was as plain as day. There's no sign of anyone being in this room. But I tell you, I... This is about enough of your harem scam imaginings. Everything here is just the same way we left it. Now I'm going to turn out the lamp and you go to sleep. Another yip out of you and I'll... I'll make you take some of your own medicine. Daybreak found Jim and Harry in the saddle heading west. The country ahead was grim and lifeless. This was called the vulture country, where many of the springs and water holes were poisonous and marked with warning signs. Even if we don't find warning signs, we won't drink the water, Harry. We use taking chances on it. Our canteens will last us till we reach the next construction camp. I... Hey, what's that? Those men look as if they're trying to catch up to us. Well, who, who are they? Do you know? How would I know? Don't look like any of our men. Rain up there! We want a few words with you. Hey, he's yelling at us. Might as well do as he says. Who oh, there? Who? Oh, oh, we want a word with you. What do you want? Oh, 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 oh. Are they the ones, Bart? What's your name, stranger? Why? Well, if you're Jim Warren and Harry Miles, we got word for you. My name is Jim Warren. Good. Take them, boys. Hey, right, hey, right, what's the idea? They want to fight. Go get them. As the outlaws closed in, Jim and Harry swung their horses away from the trail and headed for a great cluster of rocks. Neither men had any thought of gunplay. They reined in their mounts to a sliding stop and leaped from the saddle. Then with their backs against the rocks, they prepared to fight to the finish with their bare fists. They survived the first charge, but before the second, some of the gang had climbed to the top of the rocks behind them. First, a well-aimed blow from the butt of a gun knocked Harry to the ground. Jim turned to meet the new attack. The gang leader closed in another blow and... Don't make any marks on them. Handle them careful now. Take him to the vulture's nest and hurry it up. The boss may show up right away. He might not show up for several days. 
And these gents will have to wait until he gets there. He'll do the talking. The unconscious figures of the two men were supported in their saddles by members of the attacking gang. The ride was several miles to the south, where dense forests surrounded an old ramshackle house that had long since been unoccupied. When Jim and Harry regained consciousness, they found themselves bound hand and foot, stretched on a floor of rotting and decaying boards with thick draperies of cobwebs overhead. One day went by, and then part of the second. No one had entered the room where Jim and Harry lay in torment from the ropes that bound them. Hunger and thirst made them weak, and their minds were filled with questions that could not be answered. And the door of the room creaked slowly. Oh, there, someone's coming. A time. Kimberly. John Kimberly, you! Well, boys, you seem to have gotten yourselves in trouble. What happened? Get these ropes off us. Where did you come from? I found the trail. The signs of a scuffle. I've been trying to overtake you so we could talk. Maybe we can uh, make a deal of some sort. A deal? Well, I guess you boys know how much I want to get control of this railroad. Well, we sure do. You've got to prove to us that you didn't have a hand in the way we were waylaid. <laughs> I'll prove that easily enough. <coughs> Your hands are free, Miles. Rub your wrists and get the circulation restored. I'll untie a warrant here. What do you mean by talk and deal with us? Well, as long as you hold control of the railroad job, maybe maybe you'll let me invest some cash. Oh, but we'll get to that later. First thing is to get you two away from here before these crooks get back. Where are they? Yeah, they rode away. Over here. <laughs> uh, drink of water. Oh, thanks. Pass that canteen, Jim. My... My throat is parched. Well, can you hold it? My hands are numb. I'll manage as well as you did. Now, don't drink too much now. Take it easy. Oh, that sure tastes good. <laughs> well, I'm certainly glad to hear you say that. What? Kimberly. Come on in, boys. Yeah, drink it. Kimberly? Yeah. Oh, you're in cahoots with these crooks. Outwitted you at last, huh? You thought you were smart. But you're not smart enough for John Kimberly. I get what I want one way or another. You gave us poison water. And you said it was good. <laughs> you enjoyed it. Who's oh, as a friend? Talked about a deal. Why, you dirty coyote. And that letter you sent to Washington won't do a bit of good. Let them investigate your death. They'll find that you were careless... That you uh, drank bad water. With us out of the way, you'll get the railroad. Why, you... Just a minute. Say, what... Hey, man, please, please, who's there? What are you... Hold in there, Dr. Manson. You're in on this, too. Kimberly, he and an Indian came from the woods. Steady, Bart. Don't reach for that gun. Kill me and you'll regret it. Uh, see this bottle? White powder, isn't it? Kimberly. Kimberly, we've all drank poison water. What's that? What's... What do you mean? Manson, what do you mean? That man, he outwitted us. He has the poison from my bag. I saw him. He poured it in the water you and your men have been drinking. Why didn't you tell us? He wouldn't give me a chance. He had me watched. That Indian, Tonto, we call him. Tonto was ready to shoot if I said a word. I've taken the water as well as the rest of you. Yes, you sure have. Well, you cowardly fool. You idiot. Why didn't you say something? I couldn't. Look at the guns. There's the Indian. Wait. There's no need to die. Well, if I'm to die, I'll see a couple of you go first. You, Doc Manson, you... No, you don't. Oh. Hey. The next time, I'll use a bullet to knock a gun down. Boy, now, listen to me. There was medicine in the doctor's bag. Medicine that will counteract the effects of the poison. I have it here. See it? Give it to me. Give it to me. I'll pay any price. I'll buy it. Let me have it. I don't it. want to sell it, Kimberly. I'll give this medicine to all of you. The doctor will tell you what it will do. It, it's an antidote. It'll make the poison harmless. But it has to be taken quickly. Well, how about it? You, Bart. Do you want the medicine? How about the rest of you, man? You bet we do. We don't deserve to die. It was all Kimberly's scheme. He's the one that's I'll the I'll give this bottle us. to you. 
for Kimberly's signed confession. But I, I don't... You know what I want, Kimberly. Confession of your part in the plot to overthrow the government. Your part in the Black Arrow. Your scheme to control the railroads. Your attempt to murder Jim and Harry. Here. Everything you've done is written as a confession ready for you to sign. I won't sign any such thing. I'll be jailed for life. Well, Bart, you and the rest heard him. Yeah, Kimberly, yeah. you're going to sign. Yeah, you we'll see to that. Now, wait, wait, boys, wait. Maybe he's bluffing. He isn't bluffing. I know. I saw him use the white powder. We're taking no chances. Sign that paper. Sign it to you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wait, sign. wait, don't... Sign or I'll clamp down with this grip. Me too. Boys, boys. Wait, wait, I'll, I'll sign. Here's a pencil. <laughs> The rest of you will sign as witnesses. Harry, you know what this will. means? Kimberly in jail. Out of our way, out of every honest man's way. Uh, uh, I've signed. Now the rest of you, sign and be quick. Yeah. While the men signed the confession, the Lone Ranger sent Tonto outside to bring up Skelton and Silver. And he saw that Jim and Harry were able to hold guns and keep the outlaws covered. We'll keep them covered, all right. You needn't worry about that. I'll have the lawman back here inside of three hours. Oh, we're all signed. Now, let's have that bottle. Here it is. But, men, you needn't take the powder. What? Uh -huh. You needn't take it. The doctor will remember the night in town when he thought someone came into the hotel room. I do. Kimberly, you said I was dreaming. He was wrong. That was Tonto. He took the poison from your bag and replaced it with a harmless salt. Was that that you saw put in the drinking water? Uh, we were tricked, double cross, frame. And Kimberly, you sure as thunder had it coming. Now you crooks line up and we'll keep you till the sheriff comes. I will stay with you, Jim. I won't be long. Steady, boy. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.